Hey everybody, got a short video for you today. We're going to do a sculpture using Sculptress. We're going to make a tree and then I'm going to show you how to paint that tree in Sculptress and then export it so that you can use it as an object in uh, or as a prop in um, Poser or Daz Studio, uh, any kind of 3D program. Um, and I'll even show you how to import it into a couple of those. Uh, should be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Okay, so here I am. I'm just going to start out here in Sculptress, and this is what I'm going to use to sculpt the tree. Uh, Sculptress is free, and I'll have a link to uh, where you can get it in the show notes for this uh, video. Um, but it's really nice. Like I said, it's free. It's by uh, Pixelogic owns it, but I don't think they originally made it. And usually they kind of want you to step up to ZBrush after using this. But um, I find it's pretty good uh, at just sculpting all on its own. So um, we're going to do a tree today. Um, and to start with, I'm going to uh, left click on the grab tool, which is going to put us in a uh, grab mode uh, where we can kind of push and pull pieces of this. And you can see I'm just clicking here and, and dragging the uh, kind of a tree shape up. I'm not going to do, it's not very elaborate or anything like that. Now you got to be sure um, and kind of get it from all sides. And to rotate the, uh, the sculpture, you just click outside and drag across the screen. And to scroll in and out, I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And if you want to kind of uh, move, uh, like uh, translate it like this, hold down the shift key. I'm holding down the shift key and then the scroll wheel. Although I think, uh, yeah, shift key and the scroll wheel. And then dragging with that. So um, we'll keep uh, pulling out our tree shape here. And the nice thing about uh, ZBrush is it has this thing called dynamic tessellation, which means it's... Um, making the mesh uh, more dense as we're sculpting as needed. Now you can see here it's getting a little bit rough. Um, if it's getting too rough, you know, uh, we can actually look at it here in fact. Um, if it's getting uh, a little too rough, uh, here we go, wireframe, you want it to be a, maybe a finer mesh, you can just turn up this slider right here. So we'll just turn that up. And now you can see the mesh is just getting denser as I'm dragging things around. All right, let's turn off that wireframe because it's kind of distracting. All right, um, and we can pull out maybe a branch. We're not going to be too complicated with this tree for now. And of course, you want the branch to kind of move in various directions. And maybe we'll have a smaller branch come off of that. So all you do is you just zoom in. And you notice that... Um, my brush size kind of moves with how zoomed in, my, zoomed in I am. But you can also um, just uh, change the brush size up here using the slider. So maybe we'll make that brush a little bit smaller. There we go. And then I can pull out another branch. And if you get, um, if you hold down the shift key and pass over, it kind of smooths things out. So if we have this area here where it's a little uh, too wide, maybe. And like I said, that, that's really all that you have to do is use this grab brush. Uh, let's create a, like a hollow in the tree or like a, where a branch is broken off and hollowed out. Um, and for that, I'm going to use a different brush. I'll use the draw brush. And we'll just come down around here. The draw brush just sort of adds mass at a at the uh, section you're working at. We're going to use a lot more of it in just a minute, but uh, another thing you can do is you can reverse the effect of the brush by holding down the Alt key. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and touch right here, and that's going to kind of create our hollow. You might want to kind of turn it a few different ways. Uh, if you ever need to undo something, just hit Control Z. Oops. All right, and so now we have like a hollowed out branch. Maybe we want to make this a little bit not quite so fat around the edges. And for that, I'll just use the pinch tool. And then maybe the grab tool to kind of pull that out to the edges a bit. Since the pinch tool kind of drew things towards the middle. So to use, uh, when I use Sculptress, I use a lot of this grab brush. Okay, and now we'll give the tree just a little bit of detail with the, uh, the drawing brush. Let's make that a bit of a smaller brush. Like that, I'm just going to put some uh, 
kind of shapes into the tree here. Kind of doing some S curves. I'm not going to worry too much about both sides of the tree. Let's plant that branch a bit. Since I'm only going to look at this tree from one side, I'm only going to worry about one side. This one piece here sticks out a bit too much, so I just can create the brush, increase the brush size, hold down the shift key, and maybe smooth it out a little bit. And just like that, we've sculpted a tree. Okay, so let's do some painting. Um, it just so happens that Sculptress has a pretty good painting utility in it as well. The only problem with it is, is once you go into painting mode, you really can't go back and do any more sculpting. So you better be sure and be done with your sculpture before you uh, decide to paint it. So to paint it, we just click on the paint button up here and we pick a resolution. We'll go a little bit higher on this. We'll go 2048. So this will be a pretty detailed um, uh, UV map that we construct for this. Okay, so here I am in paint mode, and you can see this sort of checker pattern on the uh, the tree. That is the um, indicating that there's really nothing uh, that's been painted yet. So I like to start out by kind of filling the whole thing in with the color, and um, we'll just pick sort of a middle gray. Doesn't really matter. It's, this is just um, maybe we'll make it a little bit more reddish, so that we get kind of a brown. And then you just tap this little F up here and that will fill that with color. Now you see it didn't quite get it all so hit it a few times to really fill it in. Alright so now what we want to do is give this a tree texture and I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually use a picture, a, a JPEG that I found of a picture of tree bark. So what I'm going to do is click on this box up here and click on the new and then I'm going to go up to my desktop where I saved this picture that I downloaded from the internet. And this is just uh, some tree bark. And you can see here it kind of loads this nice little tree bark looking thing. And I click on that and select it. And we're going to enable texture and disable the brush. And under options, I'm going to set the brush spacing up to 100. And the texture, I'm going to turn off airbrush. So what happens is that 100 brush spacing is as I drag down along the tree it's going to uh, draw that tree bark on there. Now I don't have the strength up all the way, so let's undo that. Turn the strength up all the way. And maybe make the brush a little bit smaller. And here I just drag along the tree and I'm painting it with that tree bark texture. So I can go over the whole tree. Now one thing you might want to do is turn on this uh, directional here. So that makes the brush kind of turn in the direction you're going. So if I want to do this branch so that the bark kind of follows it properly. It's about to crash. And if I zoom in, it kind of adjusts the size of the brush. And all I need to do is just go over the whole tree just like this. So we'll jump ahead real quick and um, uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so here we are. Our tree's been painted. Um, maybe you want to add some moss to it. For that, you can um, actually go with one of the uh, textures that comes included with uh, with Sculptress. Um, I have it already loaded here. But actually, I guess I don't. Um, so we'll click New, go to C, uh, Program Files, Pixel Logic, uh, Sculptress Alpha 6, Textures, and uh, the Speckles one here. We'll pick that. And let's say you wanted to add a bit of moss to this. So we would just enable that brush and pick sort of a greenish color. Let's go really intense green. And just kind of spray it on. Um, you might want to uh, maybe turn the airbrush on and reduce the strength. And it kind of works like spray paint then. And you see here, I'm just kind of adding some moss to it, like at near the bottom. So it's something you can do, you don't have to. Um, I actually tend to use, uh, since I use Vue to do most of my rendering, I would actually add the moss as a ecosystem in Vue. But if you're just gonna use this in Daz Studio or Poser, you can do this to add some moss. 
And uh, the next thing we have to do is save it off. Um, it's pretty easy to do. We can save the object just by clicking this right here. And we'll give it a name. Let's put it on the desktop for now. We'll just call it uh, my tree trunk. And you also have to save the UV map. And to do that, you need to click on this little thing here to show the advanced options. And we're going to save the texture map. We'll call it my tree trunk texture. And we'll save it as a JPEG file instead of a PNG. And just like that, we saved it and we can use it in another um, application. So let's uh, jump over to, let's try Poser. All right, so here we are in Poser. Let's go import that uh, object we just saved. So we'll go to Wavefront Object. Okay. And we called it My Tree Trunk. And there it is. But you'll notice our painting has gone. Um, it, the two don't get paired together automatically by sculptors. It's a bit of a pitfall. So what we're going to have to do is go to the Material Editor. And then we're going to add a new node, which is a 2D texture, an image map. And we'll click up here and load that image that we saved off. And that was up on the desktop. And we called it My Tree Trunk Texture. OK. And then we'll just hook that up to the diffuse color. And let's set the diffuse for bright white. And now we'll go back to our main frame here. And if I zoom in, you can see we got our nice tree texture here. We can do a quick render. And there's our tree. It looks a little bit shiny. That's something we got to fix in the materials. Just go in and change the specular value to zero. One more time, we'll render that. And there we go. A nice simple uh, tree prop to use in, um, in Poser. Okay, so here I am in Daz Studio, and I'm going to do the same thing I did in Poser. I'm going to just uh, import file uh, import that tree trunk object, you see it came in a little bit on the small side. So let's um, select that and scale that up a bit. That should do for now. We're just going to zoom in on that just a little bit and maybe pan up some. All right, and to add our texture to that, we're going to uh, see. We're going to pose and animate. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Select the tree trunk over here. All right, so here under uh, under the editor, I'm going to go under and select the tree. And for the diffuse color, I'm going to click on this little down arrow here and click Browse and select our texture. And there you can see the tree now has the texture. And I'm also, I'm just going to go in and not make the same mistake I made with Poser. I'm going to turn the specular all the way down. And there we go. We have a prop here in Daz Studio that we can use. All right, and that should about wrap things up. So I hope you enjoyed creating this tree with me. So thanks, everybody, and good night.